Hello and welcome to the Hempville CBD podcast. My name is Ben Cooey, owner and operator of the store Hempville CBD in South Haven, Mississippi, and also the website hempvillecbd.com. And today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to have an interview with one of my wholesalers. It's going to be Jolly Cannabis. Now, before we start, we're going to talk with uh, Zach Gleason. He's the president of Jolly Cannabis, and his brother, Josh, is my wholesaler. That's how I was introduced to him. And I brought in Jolly Cannabis into our store about three, maybe four months ago. Uh, before I'd brought him in, I'd never heard of Jolly Cannabis ever. Uh, however, when Josh, the sales rep, uh, reached out to me, uh, he was, not, you know, he was well spoken, but more importantly, he knew his business. He knew not only his product, but he knew the marketplace. And uh, his brother, Zach, the one we're talking to today, knows it very well also. And that really opened the door for me to say, okay, these guys kind of know what they're doing. Uh, they're very knowledgeable. They introduced me uh, to their mixture. What Jolly has is a mixture of CBD and THC. And they explained how this mixture works and why it's beneficial. Uh, their packaging looked very professional. It wasn't a bunch of stuff that looked like candy that a kid could get into, which is something we always look for as far as professional labeling. And uh, we brought the product in, gave it a chance, and we've had nothing but good reviews since we brought it in. So let me introduce to you uh, the president of Jolly Cannabis, Zach Gleason. Zach, how are you? Good, good. Thank you, Ben. Thanks for having us. Uh, now, Zach's out in California celebrating his birthday. That's why you see the the motorcycle in back of him. Uh, all I can say is I wish I, wish I was there. Uh, but what got you, I, I mean, like with my story, and, and I love these stories because everybody in this business has a story about how they got into it. And of course, I talked to you last night and I told you about the story with my mother being on 13 medications and she ended up passing away. And when I got into my 50s, I felt like I was in a fork in a road. The two roads I was looking down was either a road of prescription medications, like most uh, older people are on as they get into their 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and if they're lucky, their 90s. It's just a road of nothing but prescription medication. And that's what happened to my mom and a lot of my friends' parents. I didn't like what was happening to them because what I saw was the medicine was hurting them just as much as the reason they were taking the medicine. The other road was uh, an all-natural way, one that I wasn't familiar with, but I started to study. And that's kind of how, once I found CBD and THC in the cannabis plant and started reading about all the benefits to it, I realized, oh my gosh, from a, a kid from the 80s, everything I've learned about this plant is completely different than everything I was told as a child. Of course, I was told it was evil, it's terrible, it's it's uh, only bad people smoke it. Uh, and, and of course, that wasn't me as a kid. So uh, it changed my perspective on it. What is your story? How did you, I mean, you're only 30 years old, you're the president of a successful company. How did you get into this business? Uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, thank you, Ben. It's really, really um, interesting story. It's honestly, uh, thanks to God, ultimately, but uh, Growing up, I didn't really know what I was going to do with my life. I moved to California when I was about 18, uh, started in restaurants and just knew that wasn't for me. Kept trying to work really hard and find find my way. And I ended up, you know, I was smoking cigarettes at the time. I ended up finding, uh, it was 2013, so I ended up finding uh, e-liquid and worked with a couple guys doing the nicotine business, uh, which was very successful for a while. But ultimately, I ended up getting off nicotine and uh, the company was so successful by the time I left, it, when I, it was time to leave that there's nothing left to do. And, um, it gave me a bridge to kind of start my own thing <clears throat> at that bridge. Uh, you know, PMTAs and the FDAs and the, the different like struggles that were going on with nicotine. Um, oh, and same time the farm bill in 2018 was opening up a new, new opportunity, which was cannabis, which to me, cannabis is actually something I'm super passionate about. It's helped me a ton. Uh, you know, just to, you know, to see the motorcycle, I've been through a lot of injuries, you know, broke both my ankles, my arm, all sorts of stuff. So, uh, cannabis has always been something that's really helped me and really been like just a positive impact in my life. Um, and same with kind of similar to your story. I've had friends in the sport who, you know, and same with myself who, you know, the doctors will give you pills when you get hurt and the, you know, the pills lead you down a road of just total destruction because ultimately you end up getting sick. You can't get off them. It's, you know, it's, it's a real big issue. So, uh, just in my own life, very passionate about cannabis. And then in the business, uh, 
the way that things went, the opportunity was there and we decided to take it. Um, you know, and so we just started, uh, doing what we could do and, uh, looked at the farm bill, uh, read, you know, read all the stuff, talked to some lawyers and, and just kind of put our foot, uh, in, in the industry. So, yeah, that's kind of how I got started. Once I started studying CBD and THC, the more I learned about it, the more, and, and my family's all from a medical background, father's a doctor, brother's a pharmacist, wife's a nurse. And between both of us, we have like 11 doctors, nurses, and pharmacists in our family. The more I learned about this, these cannabinoids, the more I was like, this is a no brainer. I mean, like, why wouldn't you do these things at least first before you got on prescription drugs, but do them in replace of prescriptions. And, uh, you know, I just started to realize more of the misinformation I was given back in the 80s and 90s and and so on. But uh, you said you take yours for, uh, you know, the number of motorcycle wrecks or, or crashes, the injuries that you have. Uh, you're 30. Are you married with kids yet? Uh, not yet. I've, I've got a, a very beautiful girlfriend. She helps me with all the graphic design. So the reason Jolly looks as good as it does is uh, is my better half. So. Well, all I can tell you from experience, marriage and kids, best thing in the world. But man, you will thank you will be thankful for cannabis once you get married and have some kids. <laughs> you, you get get yourself about six to ten years in that marriage with the kids. You'll be so thankful. It's unbelievable, not only for the injuries, but just to stay calm because every second of the day it's dad, dad, uh, and then when they get older, it's. I need to borrow money or I've broken something. It just, it never ends. So yeah, you'll be thankful then. Uh, no, no, absolutely. And, and I, and I can, uh, even attest to that now just with, you know, like, I mean, you, you know how it is owning a business every day is something new. You always got to, the fires never stopping. And like, sometimes I'll be totally just, just twerked and like off the, you know, really like high, like level of, uh, just like, too too high level of uh, intenseness and you know, yes. a little bit of cannabis will bring me back down to like a place where I can relate, I can understand people, I can connect with people better, I can take myself a step back and put myself in the shoes of more than just what's going on in my own life. So you know, it's not just the physical aspects of what it does, but even the mental aspects is uh, it's really tremendous. To be oh yeah, I mean, it kind of lets you know when things go wrong everything's going to be okay. Like it's, it's just, you know, we've had this thing and it's not good and it, it's going to set us back a little bit, but we'll work through it. Versus uh, if, if I'm not taking any type of cannabinoid, I'm like, I, you would think it's the end of the world. Uh, with Jolly Cannabis, what, you know, there's so many wholesalers out there. I probably get 20 people calling me a week or emailing me saying, we got the best product. We want to put it on your shelves and blah, blah, blah. It's, it's the same sales pitch almost every time. What makes Jolly Cam Cannabis uh, competitive in the marketplace? What gives them that competitive advantage uh, over some of those other wholesalers that are trying to, I, I want to say sell the same thing, but it's not necessarily the same thing. Uh, what gives you the competitive advantage in the marketplace? And also, what possible new products do you have coming out, if any? Yeah, no, um, you know, it's actually kind of an interesting story going back to the birth of Jolly. Um, when it first came out, we uh, were tiptoeing into the, the legality of it. And so we actually started with HHC. Um, and when we were making HHC and doing those products, I'm talking about I was in the lab working and like I'd come out of there like this, like couldn't even talk right. You know, and it's just, it, it wasn't something I was passionate about. It wasn't something I could get behind. Uh, and so really quickly and really early on, we totally rebranded the company, switched up the, the uh, script, looked at, okay, we, I, you, I've used this plant and used this, these products since I was a very young, you know, person. So at yeah. the end of the day, uh, I know what I want and I'm a pretty picky person. So if I make something that I'll use, I know that people that find it will be hyped to find it and that they'll use it because ultimately the stuff that we were originally just started with the HHC, these loopholes, it wasn't working. It wasn't something I would ever consume. So when we, when we switched over and we got to all natural cannabinoids, cleanly extracted, put into the product correctly. I mean, the Jolly gummies are made with organic few puree. There's no corn syrup. There's no red dye there's no coloring there's no artificial anything um you know it's it's made with very very clean extract the best you can find we went out of our you know out of our way to get the best extractors in the business they have you know stage testing from every part of the time yeah. the plant was grown you know every step of the way so um you know we're really really excited about the products we have and we've created 
and we use them ourselves. I mean, I use them all the time. So what makes this different is, you know, we're not really here as a fly by night company. We're not really here as like uh, as a money grab. We're actually not really super interested in the money at all. It's just that it's, it's the opportunity God's given us. And, you know, it's a family business, you know, everybody in my family works with us and my girlfriend works with us and, it supports us, it supports us being able to, you know, be out here and ride dirt bikes and also it's something we just believe in and be passionate and we're passionate about. So, well, um, you're saying a lot of things that, that I like to hear. Yet, w- one of the reasons I brought Jolly in is, is the sales rep, Josh, had, had told me about how you, you're, all these additives aren't in your gummy. It's more pure. And that, and that's one of the things that we liked. Uh, also, you know, you're hitting on a couple of things I had said on, in our last podcast when I talked about, you know, don't buy from necessarily a gas station or a vape shop. And and not that those are bad guys, but one of the reasons are, or some of the reasons are, a lot of them don't use the product. They're not knowledgeable about the product or the market. And a lot of them don't vet the companies. And I gave the example of what happened in our store where some lady was, uh, she represented a Kratom company and had a bunch of Kratom products and I wasn't at the store and she just put $700 worth of samples in a display case on my shelf, took a picture of it and told my manager, when you run out, uh, you can call me, here's my card and you can order some more. And uh, we told her, we don't sell Kratom, we're not looking to sell Kratom. But she was so pushy as far as putting it on the shelf, we let her put her put it on the shelf. And as soon as she left, I emailed her and said, look, that's my manager told me what had happened. I said, that's not our wheelhouse. We don't sell Kratom. We don't want to sell Kratom. You can come back and get the samples or we'll put them in the back for you. Uh, but yeah, you, you need to buy from people who actually use the product, know the marketplace, vet the companies that they have. Uh as far as new products coming out for you guys. Now, what I have from you guys, what I originally started with was your original gummy. I think it was 225 milligrams. Uh, I want to say how many, it, it was like 15 or 20. That's, yeah, that's the that's the total per jar, 225 THC, right. 225 CBD. There's 15 gummies, so it breaks down to 15, 15 per gummy. 15, 15, which, you know, a lot of users will say 15 milligrams of, of Delta 9. That's just not enough for me. What sold me on it was that CBD, what CBD does is magnify other cannabinoids in your system. So that 15 milligrams of Delta 9 will act like 25 very easily, if not more. Uh, And we started off with that. We had a good reception with it. The packaging looks beautiful. It looks professional. It doesn't look like some of the things we see in other vape shops. As far as now, we brought in a new product of yours just recently. We hadn't even had time to really... Uh, we've tested it out, but we have not sold it and given it to customers yet. Is that nano gummy that you have? Uh, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, totally. So that's that's actually my my personal favorite, and it's it's funny because people say like fifteen milligrams isn't strong enough, and you know this kind of thing. But I, you know, I'm I actually my preferred method of of consuming cannabis is dabs, and you know I take dabs all day long and and i the 15 milligrams are almost really too strong for me i eat half of one um because just whatever it is about my body and the way that uh ingesting it it totally it's like you know stronger for me but then the the, the nanos i love them the reason i love them it's five milligrams nano emulsified thc so the first cool part about that is that you feel it fast you don't you don't have to sit around waiting if you're going to feel the yeah. effects 30 minutes tops you're going to know where you're at so you can continue to eat more and kind of be safe about that side of it the other side of it is it has 125 milligrams of CBD. Uh, CBD in low doses doesn't really have the pop that it has in high doses. And when you you know if you eat two of those gummies, you know you're at a dose of CBD where your inflammation is going to go down. The next day you're going to feel better. You're going to feel more uh, energy. You're going to just the way that the cannabinoid enters your body and plugs in. It just it ultimately allows your body to to lubricate itself in a way that's you know just healthier yes. and more natural. So. So the net for me, I actually prefer the nanos. If I eat the one to ones, it's usually when I'm sick <laughs> because I'm like, I'm tired. It's time to knock out, you know. So, uh, but you know, some people, some people like that. Some people like the really high, uh, high, uh, you know, heavy hit of a, you know, edible. But like you said, the CBD and the one to ones really do increase the effectiveness of the THC. Uh, but the great part about the nanos is that I think they're more therapeutic, and uh, you know, I, I get my my bang from you know, the, the dab. So really I take the gummies for more of the, uh, the positive effects. What we do is with the, uh, original gummy, 
the 15-15. People love that because of that mixture. They're not taking a bunch of Delta-9, but they're still getting the effect that they want, plus they're getting the benefits of CBD. Now, with that nano gummy, the problem with edibles, the number one negative with an ed- edible is when you eat it, you got to wait an hour to maybe an hour and a, a half for it to kick in. Right. Now, when All it right. kicks in, man, it kicks in and it builds on itself and it lasts a good eight hours. But waiting that hour and a half, people get impatient. They they either well, you made it. You made a good you made a good point there. Actually, the the other side of the nanos is that because it's nano emulsified and the way that your body processes that is it's actually a faster, quicker onset and a faster, yes. quicker offset. So the the one to ones are great, especially if you're talking about an all day experience. You want to take it in the morning. Um, you know, it'll, it'll last you the whole day. So there, there's totally a good, a good place for both of them. And, and to your point, we're actually coming out with some more, uh, variables, even a zero THC variable. It'll be ready towards the end of March because of, uh, you know, CDL drivers and people can't have the THC in their system. So we want to still give them that, that CBD positive, uh, effect right. without. Yeah. So, and what we're doing with the nano is we have a lot of people that they're not looking to get high. They're just, they, they either suffer from stress or they're just looking to be balanced out because once they get to work, the stress level goes up. And they're like, look, I just need something to chill me out, but I don't need to be high to where I can't do my job or, you know, be a threat to anyone driving my car, doing something like that. So they use those nano gummies, one, because they hit fast, but it, we try to explain it to people. It's like a daytime Delta 9. It's, it's very... It's- very it's light. Totally, totally. It's totally like a, it's actually more of a, a medicine uh, version of the products in, yeah. in terms of, you know, it's not really going towards the the bang. It's really going towards the therapeutic side. So. Correct. It's not going to get you high, but it is going to balance you out and you are going to be smooth all day long. You can show up for work and chaos can be going on at work. People can be unhappy and you're still going to have a good day because you're just chilling with it and moving, moving forward. And that's what people love about that. Now, our society, the one thing that we've talked about in the past is how, you know, 10 years ago, if we were to talk about these cannabinoids, probably the number one excuse we'd hear is, well, there's not enough information on those things. There's not enough studies saying what you're saying that they're good for you. So we just don't know. Well, over the past 10 years, there have been over 32,000 studies. The sci- we know the science says these cannab- cannabinoids are good for you. They have medical value. They can help. But our society still looks at these things as though it's 1980 again. Oh, it's evil. It's bad. You're using drugs. You're a drug addict. They whisper about it. The ones that take it whisper about it. Why do you think there's such a gap between the actual science and then our society norms or our views of these cannabinoids. And why do you think they're so polar opposite? What's going to, what do we need to do to close that gap to where people can kind of really see this isn't what you think it is? Cause a lot of people think, oh, you're just using a drug like a somebody on the street and you're just trying to get high. And that is so far from the case. Yeah, no, to- totally so far from the case. And, you know, the best example I can point out, which is the, you know, the elephant in the room is, is alcohol. I mean, you know, this is something that's socially acceptable and it's, it's completely destructive to families, it's completely destructive to, to society. And, you know, the, the, the results of alcohol are just so blatantly obvious. And on the con, on the opposite side, you've got, like you said, 32,000 studies of cannabis and zero negative really results that can come up. Right. I mean, you know, nobody's smoking and yelling at their wife. Nobody's, you know, doing this kind of stuff. And so, uh, it's, it's, it's really sad. And ultimately it comes down to the same thing as everything in this world, which is, it's the money, you know, at one point along the line, these laws were created to some sort of control of some sort of financial situation. To limit the competition. Day, it, it was yeah, limit competition, day, the, which is money, which comes down to money. Yeah. That's the gooseneck is, uh, unfortunately, um, uh, you know, one way or another, that's, that's, that's going to be their strength. And, to, and people who don't use the product and don't understand the benefits for themselves are going to view it as a drug because that's how, you know, the message has been put out there. And, right. uh, you know, people think you're getting high, you're getting this, you're, but you know, if you, if, if you use cannabis, you know, that the high is not something like, you're not, you're not smoking crack. You're not, you're not going off the rocker. I mean, you're, you're very level headed. If anything, it almost levels you out because your emotions will be bouncing all over the place. And then cannabis will kind of give you that that middle ground so you know i really feel like uh it's unfortunate that we're at where we're at but at the same time i'm very grateful to be 
in the time that we're at because I see society making that shift. I see the turn. You know, 2018 Farm Bill is huge. We'll see how that how that progresses. You know, obviously, our our personal opinion at Jolly was that the feds didn't know how to legalize cannabis and that this and this they is don't. how they did it. They don't. So, well, they, didn't, they didn't know. They didn't know how to do it. And so, what they did was they introduced the farm bill as a stepping stone to legalize it because the the verbiage is very clear. Delta nine. I mean, if you think the feds don't know what THCA is, it's that's 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 just a joke. I mean, they may go in and add that now, but they've opened the door for such an industry that, and they know they did that. I feel, and so I feel like as the rules get set, they're going to be set in a way that's more lenient than they are now. I don't feel like they're going to tighten it. I feel like they're going to loosen it but they're going to put regulation. They're going to put the total milligram per packaging. They're going to put the total milligram per serving. They're going to, you know, they're going to start adding yeah. this kind of verbiage, but well, let me, which is you're, fine. You you're know? getting it. You're, I, I was going to hit the farm bill next, but, but as long as the societal norms, one of the things we've talked about, or one of the things we've seen is one, the science is out there, but it's not promoted. You have to go look for it. Now, you know, if somebody, if, if something bad happens with cannabis, like let's say they buy it from the gas station, it was laced with spice, and so somebody dies or ends up in the hospital, man, that's going to be headlines all over the news. But when studies come out to say this helps with cancer, this helps with uh, whatever the ailment is, and they have proof that it's helping, well, you have to look for that. That's not going to be promoted uh, through the newspapers or the social media or the airwaves. That's one of the problems is why there's a gap. The other is marketing restrictions. Those restrictions are loosening up. But I can remember in 2019, like when we tried to even open our store, the town didn't mind us being a CBD store, but they didn't like our name because it had the word hemp in it. And and just silly things like that. Oh, you know that you can't say THC, you can't say this, you can't say that. It makes it very hard to market and get the word out. Um, now you had mentioned the farm bill, and that's coming up this year. Nobody knows exactly when it's. Do we know exactly when it's going to come out? Because I heard it was going to come out last year, but they kept pushing it. They pushed it from September to February 2024. Now I heard it's been pushed to April or May of this year, but then I've heard it might be pushed till after the election, which scares me uh, because if they do it after the election, that tells me bad things are coming for our industry. If they do it before, uh, it tells me, A, it might be pretty good for us. What have you heard? Well, that's very, very, very wise, very smart inside. I actually hadn't <laughs> thought about it like that, but totally it's uh, it's back to the money and political issues that uh if it's before the election it'll probably be in our favor if it's after it'll probably be against us but um you know i think that the farm bill our hope our hope is that they bump it up to one percent on the d9 um that's what we've heard talked about we've heard you know different and you know resources and people who have, you know inside or yeah you know, it's, it's all over the board yeah, so we're really hoping that that's the way it goes. Uh, you know, again, our personal belief, our gut feeling is that the the feds know what they're doing. They did this on purpose. This wasn't a mistake. And I don't see them backtracking. I see them uh, fine tuning. So I see them okay. some putting some more, you know, they'll probably put some more stuff about synthetics out. They'll probably put some more stuff about total, you know, limits out. But ultimately, uh, I, I don't see them backtracking and saying you can't have it. Well, I've I've heard story I've heard stories like what you said that they're going to get rid of Delta Eight and HHC and some of these other things, but increase the level of Delta Nine from point three percent up to a full percentage, which does not sound like a lot. But if I if I can get twenty five milligrams of Delta Nine into a gummy at point three percent, well, at one percent, that's going to be seventy five milligrams. That's enough for anybody. Well, that's that's your point back to you know people said the 15 milligram 15 milligrams in the one-to-one -one is the absolute most we can put in our gummy because our molds are we use six gram molds right. um it's all based so on it, it, yeah it tests at 0.25 and you know it's, it's it's one of those things where if they increase it yeah we can add more and, and we will add more if we can because there's there's going to be patients or customers out there that need more you know so yeah i mean we have a we have a guy who comes in and he'll eat a thousand milligram brownie but, and he's a, but I know that sounds, everybody's thinking, oh, he must be a dopehead. No, this is a retired police officer who helped somebody uh, with a flat tire on the interstate at two o'clock in the morning. And a car hit him and drug him down the interstate. And like he's he's got metal rods in his back. Let, I mean, he's got so many yeah. injuries that he, he, you know, he needs that high of a dose. And he goes, look, this is the only thing 
that brings my pain level from 100 down to maybe about a 10. He goes, you can forget pain being 1 to 10 for him. It's off the chart. <laughs> right. Uh, so it helps him. Now, you know, it's a lot. It's a lot better than opioids. You know, if he stops using it one day, he's not going to go sick and curl yeah. up in a ball and have to get detox, you know? So it's it's one of those things that he's he's actually making the right choice there. And that's, the, well, that's why he was doing it because he was on opioids. And as far as you had hit this, the alcohol, you think about the reasons people drink alcohol. They're stressed out. They're depressed. They, uh, they, they might have pain in their body. Marriage not be might not be going right. So the, you know, the situation, they're just irritated all the time. But when you drink alcohol, as a police officer once came in our store and said, I've been to a thousand domestic violence calls. All of them had to deal with alcohol. Not one in his career had to do with two people that were using uh, cannabis that were beating the crap out of each other. Uh, he goes, you know, the world would be a much easier place if if more people were doing more cannabis, less drinking, but that's not the the situation. No, and, and you know, you see it uh, in the in the next the next generation, the guys under me, um, you know, 21, 22 year olds, these these guys aren't drinking like my generation did. Yeah. I mean, the, the news is out, they know uh cannabis is the new thing, it's it's gonna be the new thing, and you know, that's that goes back to where I don't think people are gonna go backwards because it's just it's it's right in your face. It's one of those things. It is. And if you do any study on alcohol, every the only people the only reason people drink alcohol is it gives you that buzz. Um, the way on the social acceptability of it. I mean, you yeah, can, it's you socially know. acceptable, but it's, it's terrible for your body. The problems that you might be drinking it for only makes those problems worse. Alcohol is an antidepressant. So it only makes your depression, depression worse. Whatever is wrong with, let's say your marriage or work or whatever. It only makes you look at that in a worse situation and be more angry where cannabis, it makes you more level-headed to where you can deal with it uh, a little bit better. Um, as far as the farm bill coming out, do we know when it might possibly come out? You know, the the, the last I heard was June. Uh, you said, you know, the April, they keep pushing it back. Most recent thing that from the vape, the grapevine I've heard is, is June, but uh, well, June is I really good. hope... I really hope it's before the, the election. Like you said, I, I think that, uh, you know, we're all hoping for the best on this thing. So yeah, we're, we're in, we don't use any Delta eight in our products and not, not that there's anything necessarily technically wrong with Delta eight. It's just not something I personally am passionate about. And right. it's not something that I would use myself. And so, you know, we're, we're clear in, in terms of all that stuff, but, uh, you know, I just, hope that they increase the, the limits. Cause I think that'll open a lot more, clarity in the market it'll give people more comfortability um you know we've had talks with like you know large accounts that don't want to step in the space until they have more clarity um right you know so it's it's one of those things that you know we're really hoping that they do step out with with clarity and guidance and but that we also hope they give us framework that's not going to put people out of business and make it impossible and we so. preach about that all the time we're wanting you know the delta eight thing if they keep it great if they don't but they keep the delta nine that's really what I'm looking for. Uh, and I'm not, we, I talk about all the time how we want some type of government regulation because there's so many bad players in this market. There's so many people making bad product because it's unregulated. And regulation is such a fine thing because what the government tends to do is overregulate stuff and then they end up putting industries out of business. But we all know no regulation allows for bad things to come in. So we just need some guide rails to kind of weed out the bad, but still make this accessible. Quit putting up the guardrails of you got to have an ID card and you're going to be tracked by the government and you're going to do these things, give up your Second Amendment right to buy a gun if you use this. Uh, we don't have that in our industry, but the medical marijuana and recreational marijuana does. And the you know, studies have shown you got to make it, when I say easy access, I don't mean the kid from the junior high school can walk across the street and buy it at my store. I mean, you got to have easy access to where you don't have these government barriers of tracking people, which make people feel uncomfortable in order for them to feel comfortable using the product. Now, with the farm bill, the one thing I'm looking for and really excited about, I I'm with you. They've opened up the the floodgates to these cannabinoids. Everything's moving in our direction as far as uh, the laws and, and just the use of it. 
However, we all know that could go away with just the stroke of a pen from a politician. Cannabis is now labeled as a Section 1 drug legally, which means it has no medical value at all, and it's highly addictive, highly abused. The FDA and Department of Health and Human Services has recommended to the DEA that cannabis be switched from a Schedule 1 drug to a Schedule 3 drug. Now, what that means is it goes, Schedule 3 means it does have medical value, and it has a low addiction rate or low abuse rate. And the reason I feel that is big is I feel there's a lot of people on the sidelines in our business, potential customers, potential uh, people who want to try this product, but they don't know enough about it because the education gap is there between society and the science. But once the FDA and the DEA, the DEA controls this decision, if they take the FDA's advice and says, okay, we're moving it to schedule three, low addiction rate, it does have medical value. That's going to bring a lot of, I guess what you would say, your middle class person who knows about cannabis but has never used it, kind of like me, always been told it was wrong. Well, now that the FDA has said, you know, now we have factual evidence. The FDA says, look, low abuse rate. It does have medical value. And you start, that'll take a lot of those people off the sideline to start saying, hey, I'm at that fork in the road. And I think I'll go all natural before I go prescriptions. And I'm not saying prescriptions don't have a place, but it's kind of like my father, who was a doctor for 40 years. He goes, he, he just said, before you ever take a prescription pill of any kind, you need to look to see if you can handle whatever your problem is naturally. He goes, because if you can do it naturally, that's the first step. And then if that doesn't work because your situation is too dire or too severe, then you step it up to the pharmaceuticals. But he goes... Don't let the pharmaceuticals be your first choice. We like to feel it's the only choice we have. But he said, look, now that you're, I'm 55 now, but this was five years ago. He goes, now that you're 50, I guarantee you, the day you get prescribed one pill, I'll give you six months and I bet you'll be on three. He goes, because you're going to keep taking pills for the side effect of the first one. And then you'll take a third pill for the side effect side effect of the second one. And he goes, it'll just snowball on you. So that moving it to a section three, I feel it's going to be really big for us. I didn't know if you you felt the same way there at Jolly, if it would pull a lot of people in off the sidelines because now it legitimizes what we're doing or it's not going to change anything for you. What do you think? No, no, absolutely. It it would make a huge impact. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where cannabis isn't really treated fairly, um, you know, and then it needs to be relooked at. It needs to be looked at with a fresh set of glasses with the new information and the science that's behind it. And, you know, I almost, you know, just wipe the laws and start over because it's it's really yeah. not. They're not written in. Uh, they're not written out of logic. They're written out of uh, some kind of financial uh, motivation. So they are. And years ago, my father tells me he goes, "Look, back in the forties, uh, fifties, you could walk into a drugstore and buy a lot of these products with the hemp cannabinoids in it." And he goes, "But then it slowly got taken off the shelves. The more big pharma started to become more popular, they started to make laws that." push this out of the way because it was all natural and because it competed with them too well. And that's one of the reasons I got in the business is once I started studying it and looking at it, I said, worst case scenario, at the worst case scenario, every over-the-counter medication like ibuprofen, aspirin, those things, I'm going to be able to give those drugs a run for their money because they have such harmful effects and this does not. Not to mention getting in competing with the prescriptions. I just thought this was a no brainer business wise. Plus you're helping people and that's what counts. And it's, it's actually fascinating. Like when you mentioned that, I, it just hit me like a brick, but it's, it's literally, there's, there's no real negative. There's no real documented negative side effects no. from cannabis. Not, not, not any I've heard of. I've watched tons of videos, done tons of research and looked tons of this like my own personal life. I mean, you have to really not other other than maybe inhaling, you know, carcinogens, which obviously the only thing you're supposed to breathe is air, so that's like a no-brainer. But yeah. it's, you know, so it's, we, it's, we it's, tell it's, people all the time they come in and they'll buy a vape pen or, or a smokable from us, and they go, "Now this is healthier than cigarettes, isn't it?" And we'll, we'll tell them, "Yeah, it's healthier than it cigarettes. You don't, you don't have it's all the carcinogens." It's, yeah. it's interesting that you mentioned that because you, going back to our, our start was in the nicotine business in 2013. And, and uh, you know, as the FDA kind of really tying down that grip and again, as a money thing, because they're trying to, you know, help tobacco, but 
vaping is healthier and you know they're trying to now what they've done is pushed it to china and the whole thing's an issue but the long story short is that the, the nicotine plant is a very dirty plant it's part of the oh, nightshade yeah. part of the nightshade family and, and if you do some research that that plant category they're full of just toxins it's just unridiculous amount of toxins oh yeah on the, con- on the contrary cannabis really doesn't have many toxins and in fact most of the stuff in it uh are beneficial so it's a completely different plan. Uh, lighting things on fire is is always. If you overcook your steak, you're going to be eating carcinogens. So we're not saying <laughs> right. we're not saying that it's uh, outlandishly unhealthy. We're, I'm just saying that ultimately, cannabis doesn't have the things that cause concern the way others do. So yeah, especially, we, people, we especially tell people tobacco. it's healthier than nicotine, but your lungs were never designed to bring in smoke. I mean, you're still bringing smoke into your lungs, so that's not good. But as far as what you could be bringing into your lungs as far as, let's say, nicotine smoke or cigarette smoke. Yeah, this is much better. Uh, right. Well, and then also you got to think like with the modern te- technology of the vaping and stuff, I mean, that's even way healthier because you're removing a lot of the cr- combustion and you're switching it over to a vapor. Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, we're, as a society, we're, we're getting smarter. We're, we're, we know what's going on. This isn't, this isn't the fifties where everyone thinks smoking cigarettes is okay. And we don't know what we're talking about. I mean, it's, it's a totally different uh, day and age. Hey, you know, we in the fifth, we're about. I can remember, I'm old enough to remember when doctors would be on TV promoting uh, cigarettes. Wow. Uh, and that you could go to the hospital and there'd be people, nurses, doctors, everybody's smoking. Uh, that was I, that you would never see that today. But I, I can even remember when um a, a kid got up to get the Heisman Trophy and he had a cigarette hanging out of his mouth. As he oh. did, and he said, "Thank you." And it's one of the funniest things in the world, just because you would never see that now. You but know, well, then, you know, he doesn't actually smoke. That's the worst part. <laughs> oh, he was smoking. He was smoking. Oh, smoking? That, <laughs> yes. Uh, but you know, that's back. That, that's also back then, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. also a time frame where uh, they had pictures, and I for I for I want to say I, I've forgotten the quarterback's name. He's a quarterback for Kansas City back when they went to the Super Bowl back in the '60s, maybe early '70s. At halftime, they got a picture of him in the locker room drinking a beer and smoking a cigarette. Oh, uh, nice! <laughs> you would never <laughs> see that today. But, uh, folks, I hope you learned something today, or something that either Zach or I said is going to help you as you go out into the marketplace and be a shopper. If you're following, that's motorcycles out there in the desert, so they're having fun. If you, uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, please like and subscribe. That's very important to us. That's the lifeblood of social media. Uh, also, for those who are listening, we have a coupon code for you. It's HVP20, HV meaning Hempville P Podcast 20, 20% off anything in the entire store. Just go to our website, hempvillecbd.com. You can put that in the coupon code bar and it'll get you anything that you need. And remember, Hempville, hemp stands for help educate more people. Bill, we all live in the same community. We should all be looking out after uh, everybody's back. Thank you so much. Y'all have a good day. We'll see you next week.